howdy folks, today is a very special day. Three years ago today, me and my husband got married. Ah. So, this means that we are celebrating our leather anniversary, apparently, because that's how it works. And so today, da -da -da -da, we are going to be painting a leather wallet um, with this Angelus leather paint uh, that I've seen few people use online and it was the first thing that came up when I googled leather painting so hopefully it'll work on this. I did want to do a jacket but I couldn't find one that uh, met my budget so we have a wallet. So what I wanted to do was um, a homage to our first dance which was Metallica, Nothing Else Matters. I drew this for Inktober uh, for actually Don't Tread On Me but it's the same album so I figured I would get away with putting that on the front and then I can't decide whether I'm going to write Nothing Else Matters on the back and I will put the Metallica logo on there. I think that'll work nicely. So that's the plan anyway. Um, let's see how we get on with this. It's my first time doing this sort of thing and um, yeah. So the first step is to actually prep the wallet using this uh, leather prepper and deglazer by Angelus. Again, I've not used this before, so I don't know how much to use, um, but we'll just we'll give it a go. It says keep out of reach of children, so this is not for children. And you give this a wipe, and then it brings off ew. Yeah, it's actually quite alarming how much uh, it, it brings off. So basically when they finish the leather in the shops they put this glaze on it and this just gets rid of that and makes it a nice uh, matte surface to work on. So your paint will adhere to it. After that is done, just checking it for any flaws, the next step is to grab your design. In this case it's one that I reused from my October's, just scanned in and printed off, and scribble the back with chalk. This is so that I can transfer it onto the wallet and have a, a clue as to where to paint. <laughs> so I probably should have taped this down but I didn't. Um, with the chalk on the back it's time to just outline. I'm not going to put all of the details in because that would just drive me mad so I literally just put down kind of the basic outline here. So I just had a sketch of sorts to work from because I don't know about you but I really like sketches. Um, I can't not have a sketch. <laughs> so the idea of not being able to sketch on this kind of freaked me out, which is why I did this. So as you can see, it kind of leaves a big chalky mess, but most of this dust can just be rubbed off with your finger and it doesn't get rid of the hard lines that you've pressed in underneath. So that was very handy. Then it was time to use the paint itself and this stuff goes far. You can see how much I put in here, which is really not a lot. That was too much. Um, I put a few coats on and yeah, that, there was still loads of paint left. Um, so this is the smallest brush I have and it's a number one round brush. I really need to invest in some detail brushes because this is just not a small brush really. <laughs> But it's, it's what I had, so it's what I'm working with. Um, and so basically began the process of, oh yeah, I found a hair on the edge of this brush and it was really annoying me, so I just chopped it off. <laughs> That's what was going on there, in case you're wondering. So yes, uh, anyway, I began the process of outlining um, the snake. And this was a bit of a weird experience, really, because I kind of used the white as an outline. So in that aspect, the white became my black ink. But then I left the areas, the big scales on the snake's back, I left those black on here. So then it was like the black space became my black ink. So I didn't invert it, but I did. And it really messed with my mind at times. Like you can see I've got the, the reference image next to me of the one that I did for Inktober. And I used that because Ben really liked it. And I thought, oh, okay, you know, I'll paint the snake on from... Metallica's Black Album has the snake on and that's where Nothing Else Matters comes from. If you haven't heard the song, do listen to it. It is a really pretty song and it was our first dance. <laughs> but yeah, so I'd got that next to me and to be honest, it confused me more than anything because I was like, okay, 
I'll try and just use the white as a highlight then, but it's also my outline colour, so this might get confusing. And I basically wanted to paint the areas that should be white, white, but also use it as an out- you can see why I got confused. <laughs> But yeah, I decided to zoom in because um, there was quite a lot of detail going on here, so I'm quite impressed that my camera stood up to it, to be honest. Although I did forget to turn the auto white balance off, which is why every now and again the colour shifts into a kind of yellowish hue. So sorry about that. Um, it's not it's not your eyes, you're not going mad. It's just my fault. My fault entirely. <laughs> so what I'm basically doing here is inking with a paintbrush, really. Um, and, and paint, I suppose. So yeah, it is painting, but you know, it's essentially um, just a detailed outline, like when I do my dip pen dragons and stuff. That's how I treated this. It's just instead of a dip pen, I was using a paintbrush, and instead of ink, I was using paint. Um, so the process is just kind of adding lots of little lines over and over again. And to be honest, I didn't think about the fact that I was working on a completely different surface. More than anything, it was just the challenge of it being black and white, and more than that, being white on black, um, because that's not something I've really explored much before. I had had the intention of doing it before, but I've never really seriously done an image like it. Um, so other than the fact that it messed with my head a lot, I did quite enjoy it. <laughs> Um, as you can see, like the paint goes on really easily. Um, like I say, didn't feel like I was painting on an odd surface. It's weird actually, it's not even like painting on canvas because when when you paint on a canvas, or at least in my experience, you can have um, you can find that the paint doesn't fill in the little dimples on the canvas and I thought that was going to be the same on the leather, but it's really not. Um, whether that's the specific leather paint that I've got, um, but as you can see, the, the leather, the wallet that I've got is quite textured. So, yeah, I would have expected that to be tricky, but it wasn't. The paint, however, um, it went on really nice, but quite thin. Um, so you do have to build up your coats if you want that opaque look. I mean, you can see on his, um, I think they're called scutes, but I could be wrong, on his, on his tummy scales, we'll call them. Um, I've gone in with like quite a light coverage um, to try and give it a bit of shading. I really was just winging this, to be honest. Um, so you can see like how thin you can get it, and that's not by adding water or anything like that. That's just me um, going lighter on the paint, I suppose. I was going to say pressing lighter, but that's not how paint works. It's, it's applying less paint. Those are the words I should have said. <laughs> that's me applying less paint. It did dry quite quickly. Um, it says on uh, the bottles of everything, like you're supposed to allow uh, 24 hours for it to dry, um, but it did. It dried to a touchable consistency a lot, a lot quicker than that. Apologies that it comes out of shot quite a bit. I was holding it quite close to my face because it was so detailed, and then pa painting on the actual spine of the wallet was just a pain in the bum. So yeah, apologies. It, it does go out of shot. So yes, I did build up um, the layers where I wanted it to be like super bright white, but I was quite pleased that not everywhere was because it meant that I could build up quite a bit of depth with within the image because I only bought one bottle of paint. Um, my initial plan was to get a leather jacket and do a full colour illustration on the back, but these paints are expensive. Um, I think that bottle was about £16, which, you know, hmm, now I can see how far it goes. I kind of understand that, but I don't know how often I'm going to be painting on leather, let's be honest. It's not something that I'm probably going to think, oh yeah. Um, so I didn't want to invest in loads and loads of paints for just one thing. So I thought, well, I can get away with just buying white and just doing a monochrome image. And it, I think it worked quite well. So yes, here's me tracing the Metallica lo logo shamelessly because I absolutely hate doing text. Uh, so much so that it terrified me and I grabbed these paint pens because it says and more here and I figured leather could be covered in and more. <laughs> so I did the first run with this um, little paint pen um, 
just because I, I wasn't entirely confident that I'd be able to get the straight lines with the paintbrush. Like I don't mind inking um, natural things with a paintbrush, like I say I've done it once before. Um, and that was when I uh, I traced my, my good friend Ian's sketch of um, a xenomorph. It was amazing, I loved that sketch so much, but my inking didn't, didn't do it justice. But anyway, it meant that I've got some experience doing inking with a brush. But when it comes to text, I just I just feel really uncomfortable. People think that as an artist, you should be really good at, at lettering, and it's a completely different skill. Like, I love all of those um, calligraphy-looking letterings, and I, I haven't got a clue how I would start doing something like that. So. Not, it's not for me. So I thought if I did at least the first pass in that, then I would paint it over. But what I did, as you can see here, is I turned it upside down. Because I thought if I turned it upside down, I might just see them as shapes and not letters, and it might not be as frightening for me anymore. So <laughs> that's what I did. And I, I did a decent job with the brush, I think. I did go slightly out of the lines, but you know, never mind. So the final step to this wallet is uh, the matte acrylic finisher. This is basically a glaze, it's going to restore that glaze that we took off at the beginning. And as you can see it goes on this kind of cool metallic looking blue colour. Um, and I was really worried at this stage, I was like well this could be either where we mess the whole thing up or we make it awesome. And I was worried it was going to pool in the folds and stuff so I had to just keep moving it around. I actually did apply a couple of coats, but here is the finished wallet. And um, I think it looks pretty decent. And to say that that was a matte finish, it's still quite glossy, but you can't tell that there were spots that I took the gloss off beforehand. It still opens fine, it's not sticky or anything like that. I think it, it looks fine. Um, I really like how the snake came out, putting that gloss on just kind of really brought out the white some more. And now all that's left to do is uh, box it up and gift it to my husband. So, hope he likes it. Um, so, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a big thumbs up and leave a comment down below. Let me know if you've ever painted on leather before um, or whether you'd like to see me paint some more on it. Um, if you're new around here, then don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more art content and ring that bell as well. And about that's about it for now. So, until next week, guys. I will see you later. Bye.